Today we're gonna learn why you should always do as I say and not as I do. Well, I guess you could do as I do, but things just might not go super well for you. If you follow us on Instagram or if you've been watching all of our latest videos, by the way, if you're not, what are you even doing with your life? You probably know that we made a burning river table a few weeks ago in honor of the 50th anniversary of the Cuyahoga River catching on fire. This probably also means that you're well aware of the fact we faced quite a few hiccups along the way. Now I'm going to let you in on one of Beauty and the Bolt's biggest secrets. We're not perfect. And as makers, the things we make most often tend to be mistakes. That being said, the best thing you can do from your mistakes is learn from them. So today I'm going to tell you all about what went wrong with our river table and how to avoid doing the same thing. Hopefully something in this video resonates with you and helps your future projects go just a little more smoothly than ours. <laughs> Once we had our wood prepped and ready for the epoxy, by the way, silicone caulk will be your best friend for this, we poured the first layer of resin into the mold. The first pour went pretty well. We had absolutely no leakage, but then things started going downhill from there. When you're pouring multiple layers of epoxy, you basically have two options. You can pour each layer when the previous layer is still a little tacky, or you can wait until the previous layer is fully cured and then rough sand it before doing your next pour so that the layers adhere to each other. When we first started, we tried using the first method and didn't let each layer fully harden in between pours. In theory, this should have worked fine, but when we actually did it, we waited too long between the pours and missed that perfect window of time. And then the resin started cracking and we had to go into this crisis prevention mode. Looking back, there are a lot of reasons that it cracked, and they almost all have to do with the reaction epoxy goes through as it cures. This reaction is pretty complicated and involves a lot of organic chemistry, so here's kind of a rough overview. When you mix a two-part epoxy, you're actually mixing a diepoxy with a diamine. The diepoxy is a polymer with a low molecular weight and an epoxy group on each end. An epoxy group is a molecule that is made up of a ring with two carbons and an oxygen, which can easily go through ring opening reactions with a variety of hardeners. When the diepoxy reacts with the diamine, they combine to form a strong cross-linked network. The reaction is not reversible, so once the epoxy is cured, there's no going back. The reaction is also highly exothermic. For those of you who need a refresher, an exothermic reaction is a process that releases energy, whereas an endothermic reaction absorbs energy. The more epoxy that's being mixed, the more heat is released. Now that is a key point for river tables. This can lead to something that's known as a runaway exothermic reaction, or uncontrolled exotherm, which means that the heat just keeps building up, building up too rapidly for the epoxy to set without cracking. At the same time, epoxy cures faster at higher temperatures, so as the heat builds, the epoxy hardens more quickly, and you can see how this is gonna end badly. When mixing epoxy, it's important to consider its pot life or how long it takes for the epoxy to harden in its container. And that's a key point, because the pot life depends on a couple of things, including surface area, temperature, and the amount of resin in the container. The best way to prevent uncontrolled exotherm and extend the pot life is to mix your epoxy in small batches in a shallow container. Container. Unfortunately, we learned that the hard way and managed to do everything wrong. By the time we noticed the cracking in the table, we'd already mixed our next batch of epoxy, and being a very poor nonprofit, we couldn't let it go to waste. So we decided to be creative and make some pretty DIY molds with flowers or something. So we quickly ran outside to steal some powers, flowers from the parking lot and grab some old molds we had lying around in the office. We placed the flowers in the molds and then poured the epoxy over them. And what was supposed to be this cool, fun, artsy project turned into this disgusting mix between like puke and moldy cheese, somewhere in that realm. Yeah, I don't know, it's bubbling. Why is it bubbling? <laughs> I feel lied to. Ooh, it's melting the plastic. So, I guess the lesson here is just to never be creative. Just kidding. Our main issue here was that we let the epoxy sit for too long, so by the time we ended up actually pouring it, it already started to become a runaway exothermic reaction. And the flowers ended up letting off a bunch of smoke and weird fumes, and they really looked like they were gonna catch on fire. With that, we decided to just call it a day and leave the table alone until next morning, at which point we had the brilliant idea to fill in the cracks with black epoxy in order to really lean into the whole burning, polluted river theme. We didn't realize that there was a gap between the layers, so the black ended up seeping between the layers and turning them this disgusting shade of brown. And once again, we decided to just take a break before coming back to it that afternoon. 
Speaking of breaks, a quick commercial break for our sponsor of this video. Xena is a brand new company focused on providing women with personal protective equipment that's actually designed for us. Xena was founded by a fellow awesome female engineer with a knack for fashion, which I always appreciate, who struggled for years with awful options for safety shoes. So she decided to be a problem solver and design her own. They just came out with their first beautiful ASTM steel-toed boot, which comes in black and cognac. And we are honored to provide you with the first ever discount code for Xena Footwear. Use Brilliant is Beautiful at checkout and get $15 off. And plus, they'll make a donation to our nonprofit with each purchase. And by the way, I actually bought these. Well, my mom bought these for my birthday because I really wanted them. But none of the free influencer stuff. Like, I actually really wanted these shoes, so I bought them. But I might just be biased because all good things in the world start with the letter X. Anyway, although Xena can protect your toes from epoxy disasters, they can't protect your sanity. So let's get back to the edumacation here. This time, we decided to use the second method of pouring epoxy, and we let the previous layer harden completely before sanding it down and doing the next pour. That way, we could be sure that the layers were completely cool and that they would actually stick to each other without any gaps in between. Finally, we had a method that actually worked. We continued doing those smaller pours with more time in between and letting them completely harden and then sanding them. And by the rest of the day, we were done. And you could barely even see the layer that we'd screwed up. In the end, we managed to get the Burning River effect we were going for. We pushed the video, mostly on time. But we definitely had our fair share of trials and tribulations along the way. I guess the moral of the story is just make sure you actually do your research before starting a new project and like really do your research. Don't just assume you know how to do it because some, someone on Pinterest or YouTube made it look easy, like us. I do want to say that if you do end up getting this exothermic reaction, um, it will let off a huge amount of fumes and you will cough and it is horrible for your body and make sure you have windows to open and a respirator and if you don't have that, you should just leave the room because you are more valuable than the table or whatever you're trying to make with epoxy. So make sure to take care of your lungs, wear a respirator. If you have one, yeah, all right. I should stop. Oh, speaking of things that you should do and me not stopping talking, uh, you should go back us on Patreon so that we can afford more epoxy to try again, because, yeah, that would be awesome. Also, our Patreon backers get to see lots of cool content that we post on Patreon, and also we'll start putting you in our videos soon. Patreon, follow us, back us, whatever it's called. Yay! Okay, I'm actually going to go now. Bye.